Welcome to the Electric Scooters Now May 2021 update. This month, Brizzy adding 500 scooters to its fleet. We take a look at new model releases and review the Lazine Low Glare Bicycle Light. If you own a 011X, then you need to know about this safety recall. And is that Peter Gutman breaking the law in Tasmania? You better have a good excuse. All this and more, so jump on, lean forward and let's scoot. Well, it's been a big month for e-scooter enthusiasts. Early in May, Brisbane City Council approved a 50% increase in the number of scooters available to hire through Lime and Neuron. This will take the total fleet to 1,500 scooters. The approved increase comes just weeks before the planned release of the Council's e-mobility strategy and the end of its e-scooter trial period. When interviewed, Councillor Ryan Murphy said, Our e-mobility strategy will be the first of its kind in Australia and is expected to be released in June 2021. It will set out a clear way forward for Brisbane to adapt to new technology and ensure we lead by example for other cities around the world. Crikey, that sounds ambitious. Maybe I should move to Brisbane. Meanwhile, down across the sandbar, some strange scenes in the lead up to the Tassie election. Peter Gutwin must have decided he needs more support from younger voters. On the eve of the election, he was seen scooting to a press conference and promising to legalise hire scooters if his government were re-elected. Is that a neuron he's writing? And yep, there it is a press release from the Tasmanian Liberals. Under our current regulatory framework, electric devices with power output of more than 200 watts are considered motor vehicles and therefore not allowed on footpaths and shared paths, nor are they eligible to be registered for use on roads. A re-elected majority Gutwin Liberal government will review this and look to kickstart their use more widely in Tasmania. Within 60 days of being re-elected, we'll identify the amendments required to safely permit e-scooters and other personal mobility devices. And guess what? They won the election. So I'll check in on their progress in 60 days' time. Hot on the heels of the Liberals' press release comes this from the cities of Hobart and Launceston. Looks like they're not as green as they are lime-coloured. The respective councils are about to jointly launch an expressions of interest process to find a suitable supplier and operator for a 12-month trial of the transport technology, which would operate on an app-based user-pays basis within defined geographical zones. Pending the outcome of the EOI, it is proposed that a 12-month trial commence by the end of the year. I'm sorry, I can't read stuff like this without breaking into my bureaucrat voice. Well, anyway, it's great news for Tasmanians, and particularly Karina Davis, who has been petitioning the government for some time. Hmm, on second thoughts, maybe I should move to Tassie. What's new? How is the world treating you? EcoRides announced they're shipping the all-new Okai ES500 scooter this month. It looks pretty sleek, I have to say, and given Okai's 15 years as an OEM to share hire companies, I'd expect this to be a well-built unit. With a single 350-watt motor, this scooter has a published top speed of 25 km an hour and a 25 km range. Okai have chosen to put the motor at the front, which is unusual and makes me wonder how well it'll go up hills in the wet. Pros include a folded stem lock, integrated high mount headlight, IP54 rating and large 9.5 inch wheels. Cons are the fact that the tyres are solid and there is only spring suspension on the front wheel, so I'd expect the ride to be very, shall we say, firm. The 25km range is also a bit underwhelming. Our friends at Ride Electric announced the Australian launch of the new V-Set range. This includes the 9 Plus, 10 Plus and the $5,000 11 Plus in Captain America livery. Yeah, I wouldn't be seen on that. Still, I gotta say, these scooters look the goods, and I'm particularly impressed by the full-size headlight on the 11 Plus. Having just spent 108 bucks on a bicycle headlight for my Zero 10X, I appreciate the value V-Set are adding here. Looking at the more affordable and mainstream 10 Plus, I make the following observations. Pros would include its long range and triple locking stem that also locks into the folded position for easy carrying. It has integrated turn signals and an NFT immobiliser. The nut hydraulic brakes and a very solid looking kickstand tell you that this is a high quality scooter. Cons would be the folding handlebars that always end up being loose and of course the hefty price tag starting at 3.5k. But I'll tell you what, if you want to buy me one for Christmas, I won't object. So with winter coming on, you may be needing a headlight for your scooter. <laughs> I was caught out badly a few weeks ago when I left the office late and had to ride home in the dark. 
The lights that ship on most e-scooters, including my Zero 10X, are totally inadequate for nighttime riding. So I bought this Lazine 115 Pro bicycle light. I knew I wanted an LED light with decent range, but I really hate being blinded by bicycle lights. So I wanted something with a hard cutoff like you see on modern car headlights. This product complies with the very strict German standards for road lighting, which mandates a vertical cutoff. So how does it perform? Well, you'll need to check out my review video to find out. But let's just say, it's amazing what you can achieve with 310 lumens when you concentrate them on the path ahead rather than into the eyes of other road users. To see my full review, just click the link below in the description section. Now to something rather disturbing. This footage was posted by Pete Finn at Scootmasters recently. Ooh, that must have hurt. Apparently he was taken to hospital with a ruptured spleen that was later removed. You can see clearly what's happened here. The front swing arm has completely snapped off. I'll avoid suggesting Chinesium alloy being the cause, but if you own an 11X, you should be aware that there is a safety recall in place for them. The Australian importer Ride Electric sent out this notice last December. If you took delivery before October, then your scooter may be affected. Ride Electric say they will check any scooter sold by them for this defect. Of course, if you bought yours direct from an international retailer like AliExpress, you'll need to do your own checking. I found this photo on Reddit that shows what the old swing arm looked like and its replacement. So if you find you have the old style swing arm, then I strongly suggest you get it replaced before doing any more riding. Now when I look at my Zero 10X, it appears to have a similar cast aluminium swing arm with the same C cross section. This got me wondering if there is any risk of the same sort of failure happening on 10X scooters. I put that question to the good people at Ride Electric and got a short reply saying it was not an issue of concern. I then sent the following email asking if there have been any reported issues with the 10X and also whether any Australian engineer has reviewed the design and determined if it is safe and fit for purpose. At the time of recording I haven't received a response from Ride Electric but when I do I'll post it in my next update. Lastly, watching that video made me rethink what I'm wearing whenever I ride. Until now, it was this. Which is probably okay for a 9-bot or a Xiaomi scooting at 10 km an hour. But at 25 to 50 km an hour, I realise you need more serious protection. So now when I ride, I look like this. Remember, you only have one spleen. So I've received many comments about my videos and I'm glad to say they've all been polite. So don't believe everything you hear about social media. Jen Clausen watched my video Why Governments Should Support Electric Scooters and made this comment. I work as a shift working nurse at a hospital with government parking fees that cost me $1,100 a year. It's truth. E-scooters solve my commute problem as I ditch my car and the parking fees and I can bring my scooter inside and secure it rather than leave my bike outside to be stolen. I feel held hostage, I need to follow the law and yet that means being milked by the government for fees. Scooters don't make the New South Wales government money, so I don't see it happening. Well, all I can say, Jen, is I hope you're wrong. King Hart watched my Road to Legalisation video and said this, Completely agree. We should be pushing electric vehicles as much as possible. The last mile transport is such a great way to change how we work and live. Here, here. And Floyd Bezos watched the same video and offered this advice. Hey man, come to America for a ride. Yeah, thanks Floyd. Just rub it in, why don't you? Well, that's it for this update. I hope you found this information useful. And if you have any suggestions for future topics, please leave them in the comment section. Also, if you're lucky enough to be riding any of the new scooters reviewed in this update, please let me know what you think of them. You can do this by emailing me at the address shown on the About tab. To make sure you catch future updates, please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to be notified of new content. Till next time, thanks for watching and ride on.